Well, Australia managed to get through the global financial crisis in large part because of China. China's huge stimulus program at the height of the global downturn pushed up demand for Australia's minerals and helps to stop our economy from tanking. But almost a decade on, there's a question mark over the health of the Chinese economy and a leading economist says Chinese debt levels could cause the next financial crisis and take Australia down with it. Here's Carrington Clark. China is still the world's factory. These workers are putting together the current toy fad, fidget spinners. But there are signs China's economy is starting to turn. The last couple of data points have been a bit weaker, um, but I think the real impact of that is only going to be felt in the coming quarters. Uh, and, and so, you know, we're quite wary of, of whether the, the current strength in the economy can be sustained for much longer. The official China growth figures show a gradual slowing from 2012. But Capital Economics says it's been much more volatile. They see a more drastic slide, then a big jump when the Chinese started pumping in cheap money and building up debt last year. The challenge uh, is that that improvement has been uh, reliant on significant stimulus, uh, which is now being withdrawn, uh, which you know, creates concerns for the, for the outlook uh, going forward. China's debt load is now sitting at an eye-watering $33 trillion. That's more than two and a half times the size of its economy. It's so worrying that ratings agency Moody's recently cut China's debt rating for the first time since 1989. It's unsustainable. It's, it's both unsustainable in terms of the, the total volume at the moment and the trajectory that that's taken and that's why the government over the last 12 months have been working really hard to, to, to slow down that growth. If China was a free market economy uh, it already would have had a financial crisis given the build-up in, in non-performing debt in the banking system. Um, obviously China's not really a full, fully functioning free market economy. Uh, the state still plays a significant role in, in, in backing up the financial system and and uh, you know, bailing out uh, struggling firms, and that's why you know the, the game keeps going on and the debt keeps building. Chinese stimulus during the GFC kept Australia out of recession, and Chinese money has fueled a property price boom in the eastern states in recent years. Chinese money is coming here uh, to uh, you know to buy property and that sort of stuff, and to the extent that the margin marginal buyer or the marginal seller sets the price in any market, uh, they've had a significant impact uh, on prices. There's a real risk that that, that demand would dry up um, you know, quite quickly uh, if the, the economy uh, faces difficulties, um, in particular because uh, the, the regulators are going to probably going to be much more um, you know, strict on capital outflows uh, if, if the, the economy does face significant pressures. China is worried about too much money leaving the country. It's one thing for the companies to go out as a way of actually expanding China's um, business acumen and moving into other countries. It's another if it's capital flight. And I think they're quite nervous about the symbolism of that capital flight. It does want firms, uh, Chinese firms, to, to have a greater presence overseas. Um, but there was a lot of speculative investment going on. Uh, Chinese uh, firms purchasing foreign football clubs. Uh, Chinese households investing in overseas properties. But it's also worried about money coming in. They could end up with a situation where their entire stock market crashes if it takes in money from outside that it's not prepared for. If China falters, Australia could go down with it. The most obvious candidate uh, for, a sort of, for, uh, for another uh, global crisis at this stage is China itself. Um, so the fact that Australia is, is very exposed to the Chinese economy um, may work against it this time. So our run of economic growth all hinges on what happens in the world's factory.